Hi ladies and gentlemen, in the last video we understood uh, the operation of a JK flip-flop. In that we uh, faced a problem that is called the racing around problem uh, with j equal to k equal to 1. So in this video we offer uh, two methods for overcoming race around difficulty that is one is method is called edge triggering, uh, edge triggered flip-flops and the other is master, other method is the master slave flip-flop. So let me start with that presentation. So the speech is organized in your learning outcomes, then uh, the uh, circuit of edge triggered JK flip-flop, then the master slave JK flip-flop and uh, summary of understanding. What you will learn in this, uh, are, uh, you will learn to solve the racing uh, difficulty in JK flip-flop with edge triggering. You saw that uh, with J equal to K equal to 1, the output will be in indeterminate state uh, due to multiple toggling. So we can avoid this by two methods. So one method is a uh, edge, uh, edge uh, triggered flip flops. So these flip flops are, are, are respond to the edges of the uh, clock rather than the uh, flat part of the edge or the high of the high duration of the edge, uh, high duration of the clock. So you will develop some circuits to extract the leading and trailing edges of clock and to simulate them. Then you will learn to solve the rising in uh, uh, JK flip-flop with the master-slave configuration. So that the, so we see two methods. In the, one is the edge-triggered flip-flop and the other is the master-slave JK flip-flop. So edge-triggered flip-flop is uh, 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 motivated by the fact that uh, uh, raising occurs due to the uh, large width of the clock. If the width is more than the propagation delay of the flip-flop, uh, uh, then multiple toggling will occur. So racing is avoided if the feedback signals are blocked at the first stage by deactivating the clock. So if the clock is uh, uh, smaller than the propagation delay of the uh, flip-flop, then racing will not occur. Even if feedback is there, if the clock disappears after the first toggling, then there will not be any uh, multiple toggling. So it is done by making the flip-flop change states with the leading or trailing edge of the clock. So leading edge of the clock is when it changes state from 0 to 1, it is called the leading edge of the clock. And trailing edge is the point, uh, the edge where it makes a transition from logic 1 to logic 0. So, so that uh, the edges should not be wider than the propagation delay of the uh, gate, of one gate. So the digital circuit that uh, then then it is very imperative that you have to separate the edges uh, from the uh, clock. Okay, so we see two circuits for separating the edges. Uh, the first circuit here this separates the leading edge uh, clock edges or the uh, positive going edges. That is the transition from zero to one. So, so the, there's an inverter here and an AND gate. So this inverter has some propagation delay. So the signal coming uh, here, this is an inverted uh, 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 clock with some propagation delay of the gate. So this uh, clock appears like this and uh, the inverted value of the clock appearing at the input of uh, here, input of the AND gate here, that is this. So you can see that there's a small delay due to the propagation delay of the gate. So this is the thing. Then this AND circuitry uh, takes, uh, uh, here you can see that this is low and this is high, the output is low. And here, uh, between this small duration, during this propagation delay of the gate, you can see that both inputs are high. So uh, output is a uh, high, so it remains like this. And you can you can see that this uh, the leading uh, edge of the clock uh, with the uh, width uh, uh, equal to the propagation delay of the gate. So here it uh, one is low. Here here uh, one of this is low, except uh, in this location in this region, uh, one of the inputs is a uh, uh, low. So the output, uh, the leading edge of the clock, this looks like this. And uh, if you want a trailing edge, you have to use a north circuit instead of the AND circuit here, you have to use a north circuit. Here also the inverter is there, so the clock is uh, uh, delayed and inverted uh, like this. This is uh, my input clock and this is my output clock, uh, the clock bar. So the, with uh, some propagation delay, here you can see that this NOR uh, output is low if one of the inputs is a high. So here uh, both inputs are low, both uh, uh, clock and uh, clock bar are low, so, so that uh, you get a, a, the trailing edge of the clock with a width of uh, one propagation delay of the gate. 
So if these signals are used in place of the clock, instead of using this clock, if the edges are used, then what will happen? It will affect the first transition, the first toggling it will affect, then the clock will be inactive. So by, by the time uh, the uh, flip-flop changes state first, then this clock would disappear. So even if there is a feedback from uh, the changed states uh, to the input, the clock would disappear then. So the, the, those, uh, that, that uh, feedback will not have any effect on the circuit. So the output remains in the uh, uh, state where it first toggled. So this is how you use an edge triggered uh, JK flip flop. No, I have a um, still better option is there to use two flip flops. Uh, that, that is, uh, uh, f uh, two JK flip flops can be used. The first JK flip flop acts as a master uh, flip flop, and the second uh, JK flip flop acts as a slave uh, circuit. So the first uh, uh, flip flop uh, that is a master flip flop that is usually leading edge triggered. Okay, the, the, the first flip flop will be a leading edge triggered. We use leading uh, edge triggered flip flop in this. Uh, so, uh, and the second one called a slave that is a trailing edge triggered uh, flip flop. It's actually configured as a, the second uh, flip flop is uh, configured as a D flip flop. I will tell you about D flip flops later. Uh, here, uh, only uh, uh, th this, uh, the second uh, slave receives inputs like 1, 0, or 0, 1. Okay? Because uh, if you look at the configuration, you can see that uh, this is a leading edge triggered flip flop. This is a master flip flop. Okay, these are master flip flops. The input are held at high because this the uh, uh, with j equal to one, k equal to one. I have the raising around difficulty. So this is a leading edge uh, flip flop, and this one is a slave. It's uh, the output of the master. Q is connected to j, and Q bar is connected to k. So that for the second uh, flip flop, j equal to k complement always. So this is uh, something called a delay flip flop. So what, what this does is it just acts like a latch. Whatever uh, input is, whatever uh, signal is coming here at J and K that will be transmitted to the output at the negative edge of the clock. So during the positive half side, during the positive edge or leading edge of the clock, this flip-flop changes state, this flip-flop toggles. And there is, of course there is a feedback from output to input here. But uh, that will have little effect because uh, due to, uh, this, this is active during the uh, leading edge alone. So this output comes here and it stays here. During the trailing edge, what happens is this flip-flop, this delay flip-flop will be active and this uh, Q and Q bar will be taken to this Q and Q bar. So they will be fed back to the input uh, uh, of the ma input to the master, but uh, then uh, this clock uh, uh, is inactive there. So there is no rising. So the NAND circuit for such a master slave flip-flop uh, looks like this. Uh, this is the uh, master uh, flip-flop. This is a NAND gate with uh, uh, this is a NAND gate based uh, JK flip-flop, and uh, these are given to uh, this uh, uh, second uh, flip-flop. This is a second JK flip-flop. This is a slave flip-flop. Now this Q is connected to the input here J, and the Q bar is connected to the uh, K input. So that this acts like something called a delay flip-flop. We'll say that later. And here it's a positive going clock comes here. There's a positive clock coming here. Here the clock is inverted so that during the positive half cycle only uh, this is active and during the negative half cycle alone, this alone is, slave alone is active. So you can see this feedback connection from Q to input and Q bar to uh, this input. But uh, they have little effect because uh, once uh, this uh, change status, this uh, gets inactive. So. Then uh, during this uh, negative half cycle, this is activated and the output is taken to the Q and Q bar outputs. Then at that time, this input, uh, uh, the master uh, flip-flop is deactivated. So this flip-flop uh, does not cause any additional uh, toggling. So th there's only one set of toggling. So this is how we, we use the master slave flip-flop to uh, combat uh, uh, race around difficulty. Now, what you learned in this video are you learned to solve the racing uh, problem in JK flip-flop with edge triggering. Then you developed the circuits to extract the leading and trailing edges of clock and to simulate, you simulated them. Uh, then you learn to solve the racing uh, difficulty in uh, JK flip-flop with a master-slave configuration. In master-slave uh, configuration, the slave always follows the master. The slave uh, reflects the output of the master, but during the negative half cycle only. So uh, at that time, the master is disabled. So uh, master is a leading edge uh, triggered and uh, slave is a trailing edge triggered flip-flop. 
so you use two flip flops to counteract rise around difficulty so we will uh, learn the simulation of uh, uh, the master slave and editor guard flip flop uh, in the next video with the uh, very log so that is the end of this session i thank you all